Hey, what's up guys? Do you guys remember this device? It's a GL iNet travel router. If you watch my previous video on how to run multiple helium hotspots from home without relay status using a VPN, then you may already have this router. Today, I will show you another thing you can do with this router. It could potentially alleviate some issues you may not even know you have. It can help you out with your helium hotspot remote flea management. Here's the situation. The other day, a friend of mine reached out to me about setting up a SenseCap M1 helium miner at his parents' place. However, his parents don't have much technical skills. They know how to turn on and off a TV, and that's about it. Task. My friend needs to set up a way to remote manage the helium hotspot safely, so the hotspot itself and his parents' home network don't get hacked. Here is what we know so far. There are some helium miners out there that offers remote management portals. However, these portals only help with the remote monitoring. In order to actually interact with a miner such as TurboSync for SenseCap, FastSync for Bobcat, or some other similar features, you will need to use the local management portal. As the heat and blockchain grows bigger, it becomes more and more difficult to sync because you need to download more data, and also it takes more RAM and processing power to complete the sync. The frequent helium hotspot software updates also tend to break the helium hotspots. In order to solve this problem, many vendors created fast sync features. Basically, they create the helium blockchain snapshot with their own validator. And by the way, every single helium hotspot manufacturer is required to run at least one validator. With this blockchain snapshot, your hotspot will be able to catch up with the current block height within hours. If you have fast internet, you may be able to sync within half an hour. If you're hosting a miner at your parents' or friend's place, or if you're running a business hosting miners at other people's houses, you will definitely need to access this feature. So normally for a hotspot at home, what you do is you go to your browser, you type in a local IP address, something like 192.168. blah blah blah, and then it brings you to a portal. You'll be able to do everything from there. However, if the hotspot is in somebody else's house, you won't be able to use the local address to access the miner. Currently, there are a few ways to do this. Unfortunately, the commonly used easy method, poor forwarding, it exposes your hotspot and your home network to extreme high risks. And I will explain this later. So let's pretend you don't really care about your home network security, and you don't mind other people accessing your home network, watching what you're doing, what you're doing on your computer, or watching you through your web camera, then that's fine. Would you care if I tell you I could possibly remote access your miner, turn it off, turn it on, restart it, or keep it under sync loop, or keep doing fast sync on your miner so eventually it breaks your storage and your hotspot becomes useless. So before we get into this, please subscribe Subscribe and like our videos for every like we receive, $1 will be donated to support one of the charities we choose each month. Feel free to check out our previous donations under our community tab. Also, if you want to discuss more projects, please come join our Discord. I will have that linked in the description below. I mentioned there are a few ways to set up remote management so you can troubleshoot your remote miners and also conduct maintenance such as block reset or turbo sync. So the most commonly used method is port forwarding. Do you remember we all have to port forward 44158 in order to get our miners out of relay status? Otherwise, we will lose about 15% of the rewards. So what happens here is that when there's a request, hits your home's public IP and your router sees, okay, there is somebody requesting 44158. And since you forwarded that request to your internal port on your helium miner 44158, your router will automatically direct the 44158 traffic from your main router to your hotspot. Some people decide to do the same with their local management portal. Most local management portal actually runs the web server. And this is why you can just go onto a browser, type in the IP, and it will pop up a page like this for you to conduct all these kind of maintenance. And most web servers use the port 80. So what some people are doing is on top of 44158, they also pull forward port 80 from their main router to their hotspot. There are also people who choose different ports. For example, they choose to pull forward 54321 from the main router to port 80 on their hotspot, which is a little bit more secure than port forward 80. And if this is you, it's possible that your network's already hacked or maybe your hotspot's are already hacked. So one of my community members actually sent me a few pictures indicating that there are people actively trying to access his home router and also his helium hotspot. Fortunately, he didn't pull forward port 80. And here's the reason why I personally wouldn't do it. I know how easy it is for somebody just to do a mass port scan or simply write a script to visit every single IP in the area 
and hit port 80. It's also very easy for someone to use the Helium API to pull all the public IP for all the hotspots and try to visit every single one of those devices. And for Bobcat users, the local management portal doesn't even have a username and password. But I guess in order to conduct some features such as reboot, you actually need to provide the username, which is Bobcat, and the password, which is minor, very secure. So once I hit your IP, I don't even have to log in. I can use some commands, just keep rebooting your router or keep doing blockchain reset or basically do whatever I want. And let's say if you're using a SenseCap M1, it does ask you to put in a password, which is your CPU ID. However, if you look at the SenseCap M1 CPU ID, you can find out the pattern and then people can use this pattern to generate a bunch of CPU IDs and basically use a brute force attack to try everything Single one of them and they will be able to log into your miner that way all right let's say you don't care about people logging to a miner that is fine so what a very experienced hacker normally would do is they would poke around and since it's a web portal they want to see if there's any front end vulnerabilities or they want to see what version of web server you're running and possibly there's an exploit they can take advantage of and then they can send some remote shell code and gain complete control off your hotspot itself. And this is a very commonly known as privilege escalation. So once they have established persistence on your hotspot, they can poke around your home network, try to find some other vulnerabilities, maybe trying to access your home cameras, or maybe uninstall keyloggers on your laptop or your desktop. So when you're typing that MetaMask password or some other crypto passwords, they just steal everything. All right, now you see the problem. How do we solve it? This brings us to remote management method two. And we're going to use this GLNet travel router because it offers a wildguard feature. Basically, you can manage this remotely. You can actually manage as many as you want. And the process is very easy. And the reason we use this router and wildguard server is because this way you will actually need to provide credential to log in. And the wildguard encryption is as strong as a military grade AES-256 encryption. And for wildguard, it will only expose the service to the device on its allow list. And this way, if anybody else trying to access or scan it, they won't even see it. Plus, it's a lot easier than most of other methods. For example, OpenVPN, which is also supported by this router. But we're not going to go through that today because that requires way more technical skills. All right. so. First thing we need to do is actually plug in this router and I'm just going to let it sit right here. It does take about 30 seconds to boot up. So while it's booting up, we're briefly mentioning about the method three, which is setting up an open VPN server. Open VPN requires way more resource and it takes more time to manage and set up. WireGuard itself only has about 4,000 lines of code. It's super lightweight and it only takes about maybe a minute or two to set up and you can access it from different platforms. So in order to access this router, first you need to connect to the Wi-Fi it provides or actually putting an ethernet then then you will need to type in the local ip of the router which is 192.168.8.1 it will bring you to this login page and i'm going to type in my password which is super secure one two three four five six eight and by the way never use this password click login and when you're going to the dashboard on the internet you will see for me this router is getting internet from my main router i set it up using repeater mode so it has a local ip of 192.168.1.2.2 so knowing that local ip of the glinet router next thing we need to do is go to your main router for me it will be 192.168.1.1 and as you can see i'm using a verizon network and i'm using their default router i want to go down to port forwarding so there are two port forwarding you need to set up here 51820 this is a wireguard port and this will forward the wireguard traffic from your main router to your glinet router as you can see here i just put in the original port 51820 protocol i said both but really it only just uses udp so you can go down here and choose udp only 42 address will be the local address of your glinet which was 192.168.1.202 this this could be different for you. You need to check what your uh, GLIN IP is. And then forwarding port will be 51820 and schedule will be always. Depending on what main router you're using, this thing might look different. You will also need to port forward 44158. And over here, it has a different IP, 1A3. And that's because I have a Helium hotspot right under my main router. This is its uh, local IP address. If you are setting up a Helium hotspot in someone else's home with the GLI net, what you need to do is port forward 44158. Here, I'll do it for you. To the same IP your GLI net has. 
which is 202. And then you click done. But I need to change this back to 183 is because I don't want to break my uh, main hotspot connection. Go back to your GLI net. And then you want to do is go to firewall. Looks like there's already a rule from the OpenVPN demonstration from last video. You need to port forward the WAN external zone 44158 to LAN. And you need to find the internal IP of the miner. And then you need to make sure uh, this is the IP. And in this case, I will use 192.168.241. And then internal port 44158. And you can click apply. What this does is when the traffic comes to your main router through 44158, it will forward the traffic to the 44158 on your GL INET router. From there, we're telling it for this traffic again to your hotspot 44158. So this will make sure your miner is out of relay. And then the next thing we need to do is go down to VPN, click WireGuard server. Let me stop running mine. So all you do here is really just click start. And that's how easy it is to set this up, okay? And then you go to management. As you can see, I already created a user. You can create another user, Moto2, all right? And then you can click configurations. Here, if you're using your phone or if you're using your computer, which supports a camera to scan for this QR code, you can. Uh, but this is mostly used for a, your phone. You can download a WireGuard app from Google Play Store or Apple App Store. You can actually use this as a VPN if you really want to. But in this case, we're actually trying to set up this thing for a miner. So we want to go to plain text and copy the entire thing. Okay. Now you want to download WireGuard. For me, I'm using Windows. So I'm going to download Windows. Then I need to install. Yes. It's super quick. Okay. Now you go down to add tunnel. Click this triangle down here add empty tunnel name this will be let's say mom hotspot and this will remind you this is the hotspot you set up at your mom's place and then you do paste save activate and now you see that we're actually using the wireguard connection now going back to GLINet make sure you check this allow access local network you can see there is already traffic running and here you'll be able to see the client public IP which is your friends your moms your what your dad's public IP and once you're connected you will be able to access your Helium Hotspot's local portal safely. So the best part of this GLI net is that if you set up a Raspberry Pi pre-search node or a Mysterium node or even deeper network node, you can also manage them the exact same way. And this GLI net travel router will act like a secure gateway for you. And this way you can scale your business. And if you have multiple deeper network, Helium or some other miners that's set up at somebody else's house, you can easily manage them without compromising the network security. All right, guys, if you have questions, come to our Discord. I hope you found this video useful. This is Moto Tech. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.